Today's video was sponsored by Pop Culture Zone Pressing Services. If you need your comic books pressed, I personally vouch for Pop Culture Zone as being one of the best professional companies in the game, offering hands down the lowest prices out there. Services start at only $9.99, and every order place will receive free fast track turnaround times. Even though I press comics for my personal collection, whenever I need a professional press for my key comics, I send them off to Pop Culture Zone and every single book that I've received back, every single one has had results that have exceeded my expectations and I am sure that they will exceed your expectations as well. Make sure you go check the link in the description below to head over to their website, popculturezone.com for complete details on services and how to begin your order. All right, everyone, the, the fun thing about being in Sacramento is that I was on my way to one shop and uh, we found another shop. So this is the cave. We're about to go up in here and see what we can find. guys I, I just came out of, out of the cave probably spent a little too much time in there than than i would have liked really neat shop as you can see from from the video they have like everything in there from used clothes used sports memorabilia cassette tapes cds retro uh, uh toys and, and games and of course comic books not really fond of the comic books they they storm in those uh you know uh filing bins they're not a lot of them are bent over i don't know if you guys saw that in the video they're very overpriced you got books that are probably like 2.0s that would be in the dollar bin at any comic book store even in this even in this uh current climate that they got marked for like seven eight bucks so i did pick up a, a war journal number one uh like this one was 350 i mean it's it's really beat up though but you know i didn't have that in my collection so i'm happy to pay 350 for that then I found a couple of these. There was a lot of the end runs, like the late 400s, early 500s that were marked for 249. But I found two that weren't priced, the two that I didn't have, and I brought them up. And uh, he was asking 350 for. He, he went on eBay, asked 350 for that, asked 550 for the other one. I was like, I'll take them for 250 if not they're not for me. You know, I didn't want to sweat them and be an, be an asshole about it. But he's like, well, I'll give you this one for 250 but not the other one. So uh, I, I took it. Um, again, it's just, it's very, you know, pr price your books, organize your books. And, uh, you know, otherwise I could, I could stay home and just go on eBay and, and buy them off eBay. What, what's the point of me spending 45 minutes in your store? Oh, by the way, the, the bins, the filing bins were not organized at all. There was no, it was just madness. Um, and also another thing that kind of turned me off was a lot of them had Goodwill stickers on them, which, you know, if they're selling at Goodwill, they're probably like 50 cents or a dollar each. And then they got the eight ninety nine price tags on them. So it's just kind of de deflating, you know, uh, especially knowing that you could probably find those books in that condition uh, in many dollar bins or even on eBay for maybe half the price. Well, guys, I had a fun time roaming the streets of Sacramento, but the, the thing that I want to uh, focus on is uh, my experience going into the cave and I wanted to talk about that a little bit here I know I've addressed this issue and made a couple videos on my channel about Not pricing your books when they're out on the floor or there being one price on the sticker and you bringing it up to the to the counter And then I'm going on eBay and looking at it and I'm gonna repeat myself. I spent I probably spent 45 minutes in the cave and you guys saw the how those bins were you know the filing cabinets you saw 
uh, coverless books for like mark for like eight and nine bucks that were just random Bronze Age books uh, and uh, you know Goodwill stickers on random beat up books that are like low grade 2.0 books that they're trying to sell for seven bucks to spend that much time because none of the books were organized they weren't organized by Marvel by publisher they weren't organized in alphabetical there was no organization at all so however they're getting their comic book inventory they're just taking it pricing it and, and I'm assuming they're probably going on eBay and probably looking up the book and just picking the highest price they see they're probably not looking at what is the grade of the book no they're saying oh this random Thor book from 1994 um, there's one on eBay that's selling for eight dollars so I'm gonna market at eight dollars when that book is probably a near mint copy and their book is is beat up and maybe like a 4.0 and then they throw it in their bins without even organizing them. Now, like I said, I mean, this, this, this store was really neat, you know, because they just had so much under one roof. And they're, they're not a comic shop. They're, they're not. And, and it takes a lot to, you know, really look at the comics individually, grade the comics, and do your work and do your due diligence to find an, an accurate price. But here's, here's my problem with that. They're not going to sell their product. So what's the point of even having it, in my humble opinion? So I, I, I just, I can't sit here and, and tell you how long those comic books have been sitting in those bins. But people probably aren't going in there to buy comic books. They're going in there for, you know, maybe to find some used clothes or, or some other, you know, random used stuff that you can find in a store like that. Um, anybody that actually collects comics is, is not buying comics. You might have a child that goes in there with their parents and the parents are looking at used clothes and the kid goes by the toys or the comics and like, oh, comic books. Hey, mom, can I get this comic? And they don't know nothing about the price and it's marked at four bucks. And maybe they will buy that comic book for them. But again, I just, I stand by my point. If you're going to have comic books on a floor and you're going to use eBay to price them, Price your books before you put them on the floor. If you want to price a book that, uh, you know, I could go to a local comic book store and in that condition, I can find it for one, two dollars and you're going to charge me double or even more than that. Just at least have it priced so I don't have to spend 45 minutes going through your stuff. Now, of course, nobody forced my hand to spend that much time. But again, any business is a two-way relationship. There is no business without the consumer because you have to sell your product and make money, right? And, and another thing that I'm gonna reiterate, I could stay home if you're going to sell a book for eBay prices, and again, most likely eBay prices that are for higher grade books than your books that are like not properly bagged and boarded, they're in a, in a bag with no board and they're slouched over, you know, bending and, and the spine is being bent up and they're already beat up comics laying in your random, drawers why am i going to spend gas money drive to a location spend time in your store to pay more than what i would pay for laying in my bed pulling up my phone and searching for it on ebay so again this isn't a knock i'm not sitting here being like extremely negative and just trying to blackball this location the point that i'm trying to make is and if they're watching i would tell them this too if you are going to sell comics and you actually want to move your inventory, you will make more money. You will make more money by taking the time to fairly price them. Because again, inventory actually costs money because there's overhead costs in any business. They have rent to pay. They have lights to pay. So where they're taking up space with those storage bins, because they want comics on hand in their inventory, they can have other, they can use that space for clothes or other used toys that they can bring in in their shop and maybe move quicker because that's more their thing. So again, that's all. I'm sitting here to provide suggestions that's going to help out the consumer and the business be able to not sit on product that is essentially costing them more money instead of actually bringing them more revenue. It's not a good business model, period. So uh, ultimately, I still had uh, fun uh, going out to the shops today and just showing 
a little bit of the Sacramento area with you guys. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Again, uh, didn't come out with anything crazy and huge, but that's all right. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, please subscribe if you have not done so yet. Be well, and until next time.